Well, hello friends, Coach Bob with you today, and today we're going to be talking about the Can-Am Spider RT lineup. What does it look like? What is it all about? So, but before we get going, if you would do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, you know I would greatly appreciate it. Well, lately I've gotten a lot of questions on the RT. What is the difference, Coach? You got the RT, you got the RT Limited, and then you've got this Sea to Sky thing. Is it worth the money? What do they cost and all that stuff? I know a lot of that information is available online and people get very impatient with that stuff. I really don't. You know, I'm glad that you're asking these questions. I am more than happy to create this content for you. But what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the RT lineup this week. Next week, we're going to be talking about the F3 lineup. And then following that, we'll be talking about the Riker lineup. We're going to talk specs. We're going to talk prices. We're going to talk about what might be best for you, what will suit your needs the best. And that's what we're all here to do is find out what we need to do to ride the machine that's going to, going to make our life a little bit sweeter. All right, so let's talk the RT. First, let's talk about common ground. And there is a lot more common ground in the RT lineup than there is uncommon ground. So what do I mean by that? Uh, I mean, when we start talking electrical specs, engine, chassis, that sort of stuff, they're all very, very similar. So let's talk that first. So they are all powered by the 1330 Rotax engine. Now the Rotax engine is not, I'm not gonna tell you it's a super high performance engine, it's really not, but it's not as weak as a lot of people wanna tell you it is. Those who have ridden the newer Spiders know better. Um, it's a touring machine, it's not a racing machine, it wasn't designed to be. People can say that the, the uh, Harley is faster, or this is faster, or that's faster. I just haven't found that to be true, but I'm not really racing. I know I can cruise on my Spider all day long and it has the 1330 Rotax in it. So the 1330 Rotax is a three cylinder engine. Yep, three cylinders. Um, it is fuel injected. It is ride by wire, which means that it doesn't have a throttle cable. It has 115 horsepower at 7,250 RPMs and it has 96 pound-feet of torque at 5,000 RPMs. All of the Spider RTs have that engine with those specs, all three of them, whether it's the base model, which we will just, which is just the RT, or the Limited, or the Pinnacle, which is the Sea to Sky. They all have the same engine, they all have the same transmission, they all have the same shifting. Every, all three of them are exactly the same in that arena. And in the front, they have the Saks Big Bore shocks. They are all a swing arm rear suspension. However, there is a difference in the three suspensions. We'll talk about that, but we're talking about common ground right now. They all have a foot brake. They don't have a hand brake, foot brake, which applies the brakes evenly to all three. There are Brembo brakes on all of the models. They have an electrically actuated parking brake on all of them. They all have reverse on them. They all have heated driver's grips. They all have cruise control. The rear rim on all of them is the same. The wheels are the same size. The tires are the same size. Rider capacity, two. Yeah, can't get more than two on there. If you do, you're playing, you have a circus act going. Um, the maximum vehicle load, 494 pounds. That's it. Um, you know, you get a couple of big folks on there. You can, you can crash the 494 because it's not just you, it's you, your passenger, and the gear that you're carrying on there. Um, do people ride with more than 494 pounds on there? I know they do. Um, I don't think we do. Um, looking at Coach Vic and I, between the two of us, we weigh roughly 340 pounds, and then we're certainly not carrying, you know, 100 pounds of gear. Towing capacity is 400 pounds. So if you're looking at towing more than that, you're doing it wrong. Um, all three of them run on premium fuel, and all three have a seven-gallon fuel tank. The wheelbase is 67 and a half inches, the seat height 29.7, ground clearance four and a half inches, and the dry weight 987 pounds. We're just going to call it a thousand. There can be a mild. There is a mild weight difference between the RT and the RT Limited, but for this conversation, they are so close in weight, it really is a moot point. Now you notice I did not talk about the overall length because they are different in that area. The instrumentation on all three are exactly the same. They have the 7.8 inch display 
Uh, it's an LCD color display with BRP Connect. Uh, it allows you to integrate with uh, smartphone apps, media, navigation, and that sort of thing. The main, the main functions on the dash are as listed. Speedometer, tachometer, odometer, has trip and hour meters, fuel consumption average, uh, gear position indicator, determine, also shows you whether you're in eco mode, uh, smart assist, temperature, engine lights, fuel gauge, all that stuff. The basic things you would expect. Security and safety on the three on the three RTs are the same. Uh, stability control, traction control, anti-lock brakes, um, dynamic power steering, um, digitally encoded security, and a hill hold control. Your coverage on that stuff as far as your warranty are all exactly the same. Two year BRP limited warranty with two year roadside assistance and you can get the extended service through BEST. Let you look into that on your own. Now we're gonna talk about the things that make the RT and the RT Limited and the RT C to Sky different. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at the RT first. Now the RT, when you start talking about features on it, um, you're gonna have an LED headlight. Uh, you're gonna have driver touring floorboards, uh, adjustable passenger floorboards. You're gonna have what they call an ultra comfortable seat. Uh, with lumbar support, you're going to have driver, yes, driver heated grips, not passenger heated grips. Uh, you're going to have an audio control keybat, keypad. You're going to have glove box with USB in the glove box. Uh, you're going to, like again, you're going to have cruise control. Uh, you're going to have hard side luggage. Oh yes, remember that's this. There we're getting to the difference now. Hard side luggage. You're going to have the electronic windshield that goes up and down and it will be calibrated for towing a Can-Am trailer. Also, it is link compatible. It does not come with link items. It is link compatible. The Can-Am RT does not have the back bag. That is the primary difference. That is one of the primary differences. There's not a, a large number of differences, but that is the, the dramatic difference that you're going to see when you look at the standard RT versus the RT Limited is you will visibly see that there is no back bag, that big giant saddle bag that will hold two full face helmets, which makes your storage capacity smaller. I'm gonna see here. So the storage capacity on the RT, the standard RT is 31 gallons or 117 liters. The colors available on the RT, not the RT Limited, but on the RT, are Hyper Silver and Petrol Metallic, which is a blue. Uh, they come with a black rim. There is no difference in that. You don't have a, a chrome look. You don't have this. It is standard. It is a black and plain color vehicle. Uh, now, we're going to talk prices later, but that's feature-wise. That's what the RT gets you. So let's talk the RT Limited. Now, so we found that they're, they're, they're largely in common with one another. Now, the one thing that we said earlier was we said the overall length. The overall length on the RT is 109.3 inches. And the reason that the overall length of that vehicle is shorter than the Limited is that it doesn't have that back box, which protrudes a little further back meaning that the dimension on the RT Limited is about two inches longer. It is 111 and a half inches long. Now the weight, remember I told you the weight is similar and it would be a little more for the RT Limited. The RT Limited, remember I said we're gonna go at a thousand pounds. The, the exact weight is 1,021 pounds. So the spiders are behemoths. I mean, a thousand pounds is a lot of weight. It is a lot of weight. But fortunately, you don't have to push that weight around. And when you do decide to push it around, it's really not very difficult. Now, the RT Limited comes with that back bag, that saddle bag. That's a big thing. That's a big difference. Um, that is a very convenient thing. If you need that storage capacity, it will behoove you to go ahead and buy the Limited. The things that you're going to get on the Limited make up the price difference. But those those price differences and the things that you'll get on the RT Limited more than make it worth stepping up if you need these things. So what does the RT Limited give you other than 
a back saddlebag? Well, it, it gives you an electronically adjusted suspension. It also gives you um, passenger heated grips and it gives you driver and passenger heated seats. Additionally, it comes with some LED lights that are not on the RT model, which I think is well worth it. It certainly gives you a much greater visibility for when you're driving, uh, and that's, that's a very important thing. So when you look at all of this, the big difference going down the list are some additional lights, heated passenger grips, heated seat, driver and passenger, and the back bag. There you have it. That's really the difference between those two. So let's talk another thing about the RT Limited that you have available to you. You have another color available, the Deep Marsala Metallic. It's a red color. It really, really looks good. Also, you can get not only the black finish, you can get a chrome finish on the parts as well. Uh, which makes your wheels look a little bit different. And it makes the, the vehicle looks different with the chrome finishes. Uh, personally, my, my Spider is white and black. I don't have any chrome accoutrements on mine. I just don't. Um, but the chrome looks sharp on them, looks really good. But it gives you another option there. So you have three colors as opposed to two colors. And I guess when you really boils down to it, you have three colors in each color has a combination of the black or the chrome, the black or the chrome. So there's six basic hyper silver with the black or chrome effects, deep marsala metallic with the black or chrome effects, and petrol metallic with the black or chrome effects. So let's talk about the mother of all RTs, the Sea to Sky Edition. The Sea to Sky was named after a highway in Canada. It's Highway 99. It's a limited edition motorcycle that BRP makes. Um, the first year it came out in a, in a green that was designed to look like the, the colors of the trees along that highway. Last year they had another color. It was very dark, uh, a flat color paint. And this year, they're going with a color called Green Shadow. Looks really, really nice. Um, I am a fan of the green colors on the Sea to Sky. I think they just look super, super cool. So again, as we said with the other two, your everything is going to be the same as far as the engine, cruise control, all of that stuff. Everything that the Limited has, the Sea to Sky is obviously going to have because it costs more money. We're going to talk dollars and cents as soon as we get through this last edition here. Also, one thing I did fail to mention on the RT Limited and the Sea to Sky, the stereo has six speakers as opposed to four speakers. So you're going to have a more premium sound when you're, when you're on the Limited or the Sea to Sky. With the Sea to Sky, you do get a, an upgraded seat. That seat will have the Sea to Sky logos embroidered on them. Looks really, really nice. You get some integrated hard side luggage that goes inside your boxes, your, your side boxes and, and your front box. Really, really nice. That stuff is really cool. You get adjustable wind, deflect, wind deflectors that are upper and lower, which are nice on there to have. If not, you'll probably end up doing that for your winter riding. Also, the panel that is on the back of the RT, where that when your saddlebag is not on there, there's a panel that covers that back fender. With the Sea to Sky, you can take that back box off and they give you that panel that's color matched that, that covers that back fender. So you can ride without your back saddlebag, and which gives you a more sleek look if you want to do that stuff. Also, the Sea to Sky has a special wheel. It is a 16-spoke wheel. They call it Prosecco color. Now, I could be saying that wrong. It looks kind of goldish color. Looks, I really do like the wheels. I think they look really sharp. Um, of course, all of your badging um, is there. So, the Sea to Sky, is it worth the extra money? So, now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and this is the price of of these vehicles. So the Can-Am Spider, what does it cost? Well, the base model is $24,699. There is a surcharge that right now it's a commodity surcharge for shipping and that sort of stuff, which is another $765.
So base price for the standard RT with the surcharge is $25,464. So the RT Limited. Now you get a lot more for your money with the RT Limited, I believe. Base price though is up there $28,499. Now when you add that $765 surcharge, that gives you a total of $29,264. So you're pushing 30K before any fees are tagged on there. Now the Sea to Sky obviously is gonna be more expensive. Uh, it is $30,999 plus the $765 surcharge, giving you a total of $31,764. So my experience in the motorcycle industry as of where we are today, first off, it's very, very hard to get anything. And when you do get something, is it even going to be complete when it arrives? That is a problem. That's a real problem. And it's one that BRP has been plagued with. Parts acquisition has been difficult. Uh, anyone who has followed the channel for a while knows that someone hit our BRP trailer and getting a tail light has taken us a month. So it's been very, very frustrating just trying to get a light. Um, it's just the way it is. Are any of the other manufacturers better? I don't know. I don't know if they're better or worse. Um, I know that, that, you know, the last time I was speaking to a friend of mine about Harley parts, their parts were a little more readily available. I will say that. Now, maybe not the ones that they're, that are being produced in China, which I know you're saying a Harley with parts produced in China. Yeah, I know. I know it's kind of painful, but anyway, so the BRP stuff about getting getting the product, that means you're going to be paying MSRP. You're going to be paying MSRP. Your dealer is going to have a fee to assemble it. There's going to be taxes. There's going to be you know dock fees. I would say you could add another 10 to 12% on the cost of the motorcycle on top of that pretty easily. Sales tax, where I am, is 7.5%. And when you start looking at dock fees and all that stuff, it can, it, can, it can grow real, real fast. So there you have it, the RT lineup. Is there anything I missed? Maybe, but your job is to find anything I missed and share it in the comment section down below. This is a community. I want you to, to, to be engaged in this. If you're looking at the RT, hopefully this gave you all of the information that you need and maybe a little more than you wanted, and that's good too. So next week, we're going to be talking about the F3 lineup and all of that good stuff. But do me one more favor before we get going. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. You know I appreciate it. So until next time, do me a favor. Go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself. Ooh, we got to do it. And remember, if you're not having fun, you are doing it wrong. Now you go seize the day, and I will see you on the road real, real soon.